Hello, my name's Pete James. Um, there's people watching out the window. Should I wave to them? Hello, hello, and they're waving back. Call the beck and them in. It's for audience. Um, I uh, used to be the curator of photographs at the Library of Birmingham for 25 years, and I'm now working as a freelance uh, photographic historian and uh, researcher. So I've kind of gone full circle because I kind of started out as a photographic historian. Um, the project I want to talk about this afternoon is called Threshold. It's one project I'm working on with uh, the artist Matt Collishaw, who I collaborated with previously on the exhibition In Camera uh, at the Library of Birmingham. Um, and the initial conversation for the project kind of came out of a, uh, a meeting at a kind of a critical point in that process. Um, I think it's fair to say that most Bond Fellows are um, by and large part of a community of creative practitioners working across art, science and technology. Um, now there's a couple of things that I'm kind of not. I'm kind of like the, uh, I feel a bit of a fraud here really. Uh, Firstly, um, I'm not kind of very digitally minded. I have to get my dog to help me switch my laptop on at home. Um, my son, who is kind of very kind of computer literate, helps me out a lot. Um, and I'm not artistic either. Um, my daughter, who is studying uh, art at a foundation course at Dudley, will tell you that I don't have any kind of artistic sensibilities. So I'm kind of not two of the things which seem to be critical to being a bomb fellow, but somehow I kind of managed to kind of fit in anyway. Um, but when you're not one of those things, what you do is you work with people who do have those kind of capabilities. Um, so I'm working with two people who are certainly kind of very uh, kind of computer and technically literate and kind of have artistic tendencies and they um, they kind of two kind of like really fascinating people for me to kind of work with. Um, as I said, I'm a kind of photographic historian um, and uh, my kind of key area of interest, I guess, has always been kind of the history of photography in Birmingham, which is something which has been overlooked, ignored, uh, kind of unreported, both within the broader, broader history of photography and certainly within the city's own civic history. So now I've got free time in my hands, I'm kind of going back and I want to start exploring and kind of developing ideas around that. Um, I've also got uh, quite a keen interest in the way in which kind of certain new digital technologies can be used as tools or kind of processes, kind of machines for articulating different kind of ideas around the history of photography as well. Um, and that's something I'm kind of exploring. That's why I have to work with other people who know what they're talking about when they kind of do that. Um, our projects, um, are really kind of focused around the work of two really important uh, people who have kind of connections with Birmingham's photographic history. Uh, one is George Shaw, who you can see on what's my bottom left here, um, who was a patent agent, professor of chemistry, a, um, an artist, um, um, member of, a founder member of many kind of learned societies in Birmingham, quite a remarkable man. Um, who's said to have taken the first ever photograph of Birmingham on around about August the 16th, um, which is possibly the earliest daguerreotype taken in England, let alone kind of Birmingham, um, and it was made, probably made just up the road, with the image that Jim, uh, Joe's working around in uh, Paradise Street. Um, I've been looking for the image for 20 years, I don't think it still exists. Um, it's kind of like my holy grail, because then I can put it on, flog it, and retire at that point. Well, I have retired. Retired twice. Um, and the other guy is William Henry Fox Talbot, who's the English inventor of photography. Um, so we've got a project now which involves uh, myself, Joe, Mark Hollishaw, George Shaw, and William Henry Fox Talbot. I'm kind of working on two projects. They kind of overlap. I'm doing a, a big research project about George Shaw as an individual, but he kind of links very closely with kind of Talbot. Um, now these, both Talbot and Shaw, I kind of think, worked across art, science, commerce, industry, kind of invention, and I think they're kind of two people who would be amazed and extraordinarily engaged in the possibilities that digital technology and computer technology, in terms of kind of imaging, um, if they were around today, they would be uh, totally in there doing it, I think is the technical phrase. So, I'm really not going to talk about 
technological things this afternoon. I'm kind of working with Matt and Joe because they understand that. I'm going to stay within my kind of uh, safety blanket of kind of photograph photographic history. Um, so what I'm kind of really doing is I, my kind of role is to provide the, the research data and kind of information and collaboration and share ideas with Joe and Matt and they kind of go away and produce the art um, or the, the, the projects which kind of result from that. Um, so you can ask me lots of technical questions about the project and I will just go, I haven't got a clue. Um, so Threshold relates to a number of critical moments and events in the history of photography. Um, this is the moments and events which took place here in Birmingham and uh, which have until now kind of largely been overlooked in the history of photography. Um, Joe's already begun to talk about one of these, the uh, daguerreotype made by George Shaw in Paradise Street. We kind of think it was taken out of the window of what was Queen's College, the kind of medical school across the road of a, a kind of white house. Um, and the other is an exhibition which happened at uh, King Edward School in New Street, um, just down the road. Um, and it's an, a, project, uh, a moment which could arguably be described as the first public exhibition of photographs in the UK. Um, the exhibition in question, uh, this is the catalogue for it, uh, it was an exhibition of illustrations of manufacturers, inventions, models, philosophical apparatus, which was organised by the Birmingham, members of the Birmingham Literary and Philosophical Society uh, to coincide with the meeting of the British Association for the Advancement of Science, which happened in Birmingham in August 1839. Um, the exhibition was kind of advertised in the local press. People were asked to submit uh, exhibits to kind of go into this. And the idea was, was that Birmingham would not only show um, the most cutting edge of its own kind of inventions and manufacturers, but it would invite other people to exhibit some of the latest kind of cutting edge inventions as well. So Talbot got wind of this and decided that he was going to display 92 photogenic drawings at this exhibition. So this is the, uh, the catalogue on the right hand side. And given this is the, an exhibition in which it's, it's probably the first public exhibition of photographs, uh, number 202 is just listed as photogenic drawings by H. Box Talbot. There is actually a list of those uh, 92 images, and we're currently kind of tracing those through collections at the British Library and uh, at was, what was the National Media Museum, soon may come to the VNA. I don't know. There's, there's a collection that's in a kind of a state of geographical flux, I think, at the moment. It's kind of interesting in itself. Um, so what kind of interests me is Talbot's images. This is probably the first time that some people have ever seen a photograph. Quite a bit have been written about photography uh, from the moment that Talbot announces his and Daguerre announced their inventions in January 1839. There's this competition to have a kind of a priority claim about invention. Talbot shows a small album at the Royal Society and then the Royal Institution in kind of January and February. But this is the first time there's a public exhibition of his work, and it's 92 prints shown in six glass vitrines um, alongside all these other objects. But I'm fascinated to know that having to, to speculate about how people understood seeing photographs for the first time, not only photographs in themselves, but also in relation to these, all these other kind of bizarre inventions that were shown in the room. So there were things from like a model of a brass bedstead to uh, forms of uh, copper ingots, um, to, um, I can't forget, all, all these other kind of extraordinary kind of like Victorian Heath Robinson inventions, some of them which went into process and some of them which only existed as models. They kind of only appeared for the moment of that exhibition. So if you see a photograph for the first time, how do you know what you, how do you understand what you're kind of looking at in that moment? Um, as I said before, the exhibition uh, took place ooh, two minutes um, at uh, King Edward School in New Street, which you can see on the uh, top left-hand side here. It's actually the site which is occupied by the Odeon Cinema now, uh, a building which is kind of showing immersive visual media with kind of IMAX films, which is kind of quite interesting link. Um, we managed to get access to the original um, Charles Barry architectural drawings of the building, so we're actually kind of locating the, the rooms and the spaces, and we'll recreate those as part of the exhibition. So Talbot shows, uh, as I say, 92 photogenic drawings. These included botanical studies, arch architectural studies, photogenic drawings of lace, and also some images taken through the solar microscope. Um, 
And what we want to do, and this is kind of where Matt and I kind of came together, is the idea is I was really interested in recreating this exhibition, trying to get some sense of what it was to see for photography for the first time. Matt's very really interested in virtual reality. Um, so we decided to try and put those two things together. So what we're going to try and do is use virtual reality to remake or reimagine this exhibition so people can go back and, and kind of revisit it. Um, two of the images that George Shaw made will be kind of critical to this uh, project. These, I think, are the two earliest surviving photographs ever taken in Birmingham. These are two views of New Street, taken about 1844. The building with the columns in the middle is roughly, well, it bestrides Union Passage. So this is where um, Britannia Hotel and uh, Primark are now. Um, and this is a view probably taken across from the Grammar School, taken by George Shaw. Um, so the, the, the fact that the first exhibition happens at King Edward School, these images, these the surviving images kind of come from, from that location. It's a really important site in the city for photographic history. These are part of a private collection I'm working on uh, around George Shaw, and that's hopefully that'll be another whole new project. So I just want to, this is kind of explains things far better than I can. This is a, a kind of a walkthrough that Matt's kind of created at the moment that will hopefully explain a bit about the, the, uh, the actual exhibition that we're going to make. These are very kind of early stage uh, ideas and kind of drawings around the project. We hope this will take place in uh, Waterhall Museum and Art Gallery in uh, August 2017, along with a whole raft of other projects. We're hoping we can schedule Joe's project so that it happens at the same time because it's all around complementary themes about the history of photography in the city. I'm upgrading to a Samsung S7 this weekend, which I'm told will come with a free VR headset so that I can actually kind of catch up with the technology. quiet, isn't it? Okay, I think that's that. I just got one more slide to show, but I don't know how to go from there. So. so this is a, this is good, just a kind of a screen grab, so you can get an idea of the kinds of extraordinary kind of other objects that were shown in the room at the same time as uh, Talbot's drawings. Um, we think the original exhibition was shown in a library in uh, King Edward School, so we're going to, these were early um, ideas based on a kind of a Georgia room, but it's clearly a kind of Victorian Gothic room. So we need to kind of re-establish uh, re and redesign the kind of the background, but the, the vitrines and those kind of contents will stay the same. So we're working with a number of project partners. Um, Bon, of course, here kind of facilitating the kind of the project and we hope to deliver some of the outreach and kind of education activities. 
Museum and Art Gallery, BCU, who are supporting the search. Uh, National Media Museum, British Library, who are probably going to be suppliers of the digital uh, versions of the kind of the tall book pictures. Um, Bodley Library at, at Oxford, who are kind of doing a big catalogue resume project around Talbot. Royal Institution, um, who are very interested in kind of showing it and helping with the research. And also the Photo History Research Centre at De Montfort University. So we've got quite a, a cluster of interesting partners to kind of work around the project too. So sorry for that rambling, disjointed, <laughs> unconnected. And I'm not Matt Collishaw, it's kind of like losers on every count.